Hey everyone, this week Theresa May finally unveiled the details of her Brexit plan and in doing so became about as popular as Peter Sutcliffe at a WI meeting. Ground troops were mobilised, ministers resigned, letters were written, pieces were given to camera and if a week is a long time in politics then this upcoming week will feel like a DFS sailing comparison. If you're frantically clicking the refresh button on an internet news website waiting for the announcement of a leadership election, it almost feels like the old days waiting for the CFAX page to tick over. And I imagine that the Prime Minister is currently frantically watching the clock tick by like a football fan in the 89th minute, very aware that the more that time passes, the greater the chance that she'll have escaped one more time. In the meantime, following resignations, there are a whole bunch of cabinet appointees because, as they say, as one door closes, another one opens. That's a great expression, but it's also very annoying if you have a cheap IKEA wardrobe, I guess. Those new ministers, then. Stephen Barclay is the new Brexit secretary. It's a job which largely involves signing off dishonest press releases and claiming expenses. Ironically, the same sort of European parliamentary thing we've been supposedly trying to leave for the last two years. Amber Rudd is the new DWP minister, the sixth in three years, by the way, and the Northern Ireland minister is Remain fanatic John Penrose. Mathematicians and fans of optical illusions will be aware that a Penrose triangle is the proper name for that 3D impossible triangle thing, so perhaps it's all just a highbrow joke, you know, placing him in Northern Ireland, the unsolvable part of the Brexit riddle. Except I doubt that anyone is in charge or sensibly in control of anything right now. On the plus side, it's perhaps only now that with Angela Merkel also about to leave her job that it's dawning on Brussels that the same sort of incompetence to negotiate anything of substance is the same incompetence that makes Mrs May utterly unable to sell their backstop scan and the UK looks increasingly likely to leave with no deal. The most annoying thing, of course, is that if that were to happen, then in 10 years from now, we'll almost certainly be subjected to europhile careerists insisting that they were playing a long con from the start and that they supported a no-deal Brexit the whole time. Hashtag Philip Hammond. <clears throat> anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe.